Hi. Welcome to another video. Today's topic is about cardiac cycle. Before we go through the topic, let us go through a quick overview regarding the functional anatomy. All you need to remember is at the right side, deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium through vena cava. Then, the deoxygenated blood is transferred to right ventricle. Between the right atrium and right ventricle is the atrioventricular valve. The right ventricle pumps the blood to the lungs via pulmonary artery which also has semilunar valve. Then, after getting oxygen, the blood then returns to left atrium via the pulmonary vein. Then, it flows to left ventricle. Between the left atrium and the left ventricle is the mitral valve. The left ventricle pumps the blood via the aorta. The beginning of aorta is guarded by the aortic semilunar valves. You must remember that the right and left heart work simultaneously. This is very important. The second thing you need to know is the terminology that is systole and diastole. A systole means contraction and diastole means relaxation. Okay, let's assume you know the layout of the heart and the terminologies, now we will operate on this topic. Just keep in mind, all the actions that are discussed here happen in the left and right side simultaneously. For example, if I use the term atrial systole, it means both the right atrium and the left atrium contracts simultaneously. A word of caution though, in the beginning, learning cardiac cycle is a bit confusing, at least it was for me, but my advice is to go through it until you understand, okay? Let us begin. Cardiac cycle is defined as the period from the beginning of one cardiac contraction to the beginning of next cardiac contraction. If we were to take normal heart rate for healthy individual that is 75 beats per minute, the duration of each cardiac cycle is 0.8 seconds. There's some resources out there and many textbooks that divide cardiac cycle up to 7 phases. You can do so but the way I remember is, I divide them into atrial systole, atrial diastole, ventricular systole and ventricular diastole. Let us first start with atrial systole. An atrial systole lasts about 0.1 seconds. What happens actually? Even before the atrial systole begins, the mitral valve and tricuspid valve are open and most of the atrial blood has already been transferred passively into the ventricles. Therefore, atrial systole actually contributes only about 30% of the ventricular filling. You may ask why blood from the atria does not regurgitate to the vena cava. The reason is that regurgitation of blood into the veins is prevented by narrowing of the venous orifices due to contraction of the atrial muscle. As atrial systole lasts only 0.1 second, the balance of 0.7 second, the atria remains in diastole. Now, you have blood in left and right ventricles, so naturally the ventricles must contract to push out the blood into the pulmonary artery and aorta. Now we will look at ventricular systole which lasts round about 0.3 seconds. You must remember that as soon as atrial systole ends, ventricular systole immediately begins. As the ventricular systole begins, the intraventricular pressure begins to rise. This rise of pressure will close both the mitral and tricuspid valve just like a door is shut at your face, so blood cannot backflow into the atria. Next, what happens? The intraventricular pressure continues to increase, but ejection of blood into the aorta or the pulmonary artery does not occur, since the semilunar valves are still closed. This period between the beginning of ventricular systole and opening of semilunar valves lasts about 0.05 seconds. This period is known as isovolumic or isometric contraction phase. When the intraventricular pressure exceeds the pressure in the aorta and the pulmonary artery then the semilunar valves open and ventricular ejection begins. The ejection of blood is rapid at first but slows down during the later part of ventricular systole. The amount of blood ejected out of each ventricle in each systole called as stroke volume is about 70 milliliters, but another 50 milliliters of blood are left in each ventricle at the end of systole and this is called as end systolic volume. When the both ventricles finish contracting, they must relax and hence term used is ventricular diastole. Ventricular diastole lasts round about 0.5 seconds. 
Now, we will see what are the events happening during ventricular diastole. As the ventricles begin to relax, there is a steep fall in the intraventricular pressure. The pressure gradients between the ventricles and the related vessels are reversed. It means the pressure in the ventricles now are lower compared to the pressure in the aorta and pulmonary artery. Consequently, the blood tends to regurgitate back into the ventricles. This regurgitation of blood is prevented by the closure of semilunar valves immediately after the end of ventricular systole. The intraventricular pressure continues to decrease till it falls below the atrial pressure which causes the atrioventricular valves to open. The interval between the closure of semilunar valves and the opening of atrioventricular valves is known as isovolumic or isometric relaxation phase. You also need to remember that throughout the ventricular systole, the atria is in diastole which means the atria are being filled with blood from the great veins. So, when the atrioventricular valves open, blood rushes from the atria into the ventricles even though the atria are still in diastole. Ventricular filling is rapid at first but slows down during the later part of ventricular diastole. The next cardiac cycle begins with the onset of next atrial systole. These are some questions that can test your remembrance of the topic. Pause this video and try to answer them. That's all regarding the cardiac cycle. If you find value in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe as this will motivate me into doing more videos like this. If you have any biology topics that need discussion, send them via the Google form that I have linked below. Thank you and see you in the next video.